The Methodist Church of Southern Africa has inducted Reverend Purity Nomtando Zomalinga as its first female presiding bishop. The service took place in Germiston on the East Rand. Malinga was elected in May this year. She takes over reigns from Bishop Zipokutle Siwa, who was uh, serving his uh, third term. The Methodist Church has a following of three million in different countries on the African continent, including South Africa. All right, for more and uh, reaction, we now welcome in studio with us Reverend Dick Sibego and Reverend Jenny Samdan uh, from the Methodist Church of uh, Southern Africa. Methodist, I mean, Reverends, thank you so very much uh, for joining us uh, here on SA Today. And I'm so glad I'm not in my usual mini skirts uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm scared I would have been judged. But <laughs> nonetheless, welcome and thank you so very much uh, for coming through to SABC today. Thank you for having thank us. You for having uh, us. Let, let's start then. And I'm really glad I was brought to, to female uh, Reverends then uh, today. I'd like to get some uh, reaction from you about, uh, you know, the appointment of the first uh, bishop, but also the, the reaction that you've sort of sensed uh, from the church, uh, really, at large. Let, let's start with you, Reverend Dix. Yeah. I'll say this started during our synods, when we were just waiting to hear that uh, our presiding bishop, uh, Purity Malinga, is, her name is like the name. Yeah. And we're just, we're overwhelmed and we're told, like most, almost, um, the districts, the synods, her name is like on top. We were singing Zachi, his zinto, things are changing. Yeah. And that mood carried, carried us through. And today was just a climax. Mm. And, 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 and Reverend Jane, what, 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 what's your reaction? Well, I. It, I'm over the moon. Uh, I think she's just the right person for the church at this time. And as Dix has said, it was an overwhelming majority. There was no second ballad, first ballad. Purity Malinga got uh, the vote. There was no, no doubt about it, yeah. um, which gives us a feeling that the whole church is behind her. I'm not saying that patriarchy is dead because we still have a long way to go. But I think today there was a real sense of we will follow her. Um, mm -hmm. The way she spoke, um, the way she, she, she encouraged the church, uh, we're all together in this, it's not just her. Um, yeah, I, th I, think, I think there's a change um, in the church. And I want to talk about, uh, talking about that uh, change, the significance of uh, a Reverend uh, Purity's appointment uh, in, in, in the church. What is the significance really uh, for the Methodist church, especially if we look at a historical uh, context of that patriarchy that you, you mm -hmm. rightly sp uh, speak of? Mm -hmm. I, I think the, 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 the relevance is that she's the first female presiding bishop uh, there have been 99 before her. Mm. And so for, for her to be chosen to lead us, I, I think is just wonderful. Um, as I said, she's, a, she's a, a, a strong woman. She's a woman with, with lots of character. Uh, she's a woman who served, she's been a bishop. She's been the only bishop, a woman bishop. So she's got the, 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 the history of the church. Uh, at the moment, she's uh, in the department where we train our ministers, so she's got insight into that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's just fantastic. Now, you know, um. Reverend Jenny speaks about the fact that, you know, there have been 99 men uh, before her. Let's uh, uh, talk about why it took so long, really, uh, to get to this point, to have a female at the helm as uh, the bishop yeah. of, of, of the Methodist Church. And, you know, are there some sort of politics behind it? And, uh, I mean, we've been mentioning the word that the, the word we've used today is patriarchy. Yeah. I mean, ha has that been a major sort of hindrance um, as to why she is, you know, only now um, yeah. getting to this role? I, I would say that, um, yeah, patriarchy is deep. And unfortunately, you know, it starts from when we read the Bible with the children. You know, there are two crea uh, creation stories in the Bible. And the one that talks about God created male and female, created us all in God's own image. But there's another one that talks about women are created. I mean, men were created first, then women, you know, the, the rip issue. Yes, yes. Um, I think for me, the way we read the Bible, the way we interpret the Bible, actually shows the deepness of patriarchy. Yeah. Um, because it's like men comes first, you know, 
um, you know, culturally, you're going to have a baby boy, you're going to have a baby girl, oh, it's going to be a baby boy, yeah. you know. So I think for me, it's, it, it starts right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Jenny is correct. Um, it has taken a long time. Regardless of the fact that women are in majority in the church, um, the leadership of the church from the grassroots, you know, women are in majority. But where you have, let's say, uh, two men out of, out of 18 or out of 20, um, of course those two men will be, you know, will be elected as leaders. Yeah. I also think we have internalized the whole, you know, male leadership that we can only have um, men as leaders, not women. So it has really, really taken a long time. And I'm just so happy, as Jenny has said, I mean, she has been the first woman bishop. But now as we talk, um, two weeks back, the first woman bishop in Cape Town has been inducted. And then Central, we're looking forward for 2021, um, in Namibia, we've got the first woman bishop as well. So at least I think we get in there. But for me, it's just right at the beginning. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's, it's so important what you're talking about, the fact that even though there can be uh, uh, less men in the room, it's, it's, it's the men who, who will be heard. And then there's this concern now that uh, I, I'm sitting with, and, and perhaps you can you know, clarify for me how we, you know, we would avoid this sort of a situation where maybe um, the, the bishop is seen as a figurehead you know, to satisfy uh, the, the female reverence or the female uh, congregation. Mm. And, um, but she's still you know, perhaps taking, I suppose, orders uh, from uh, the, the, the men in the church. Mm. How will we be able to move from that? As, as we know, churches are essentially mm. uh, patriarchal. Mm. Is there no fear of the fact that she would just be a sort of face of, of, you know, of the church? Like, look, mm. we are moving forward. Mm. We mm. brought you a, a female bishop. Mm. I don't think so in, 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 in terms of the person. If it was anybody else, I'd say, okay, maybe she was a figurehead. Yeah. Um, but purity has really, as it were, moved through the ranks of the church. She's proved herself in everything that she does, she's good at. Um, and so I think the fact that she's been chosen as the presiding bishop by all the districts, and that includes Mozambique, Namibia, Botswana, uh, the Suti, Swaziland, Swaziland. Africa, yeah. so everybody, the majority voted for her. So I, don't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see her as a figurehead. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think people are slowly beginning to say we need to work together. And I think that was Purity's message. Um, we need men and women to work together. We don't need to be at loggerheads. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't need to be fighting with each other. We need to be um, together in the mission mm -hmm. of building the church of healing the wounded, mm -hmm. of getting land back for those who are landless, mm -hmm. of being with the, the refugees when they are, are struggling. So it's, it's, it's all of that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and Reverend Purity is up for that. Now, this is a question uh, for both of you. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at both of you, and you both seem to be reverends who are with the times. I'm looking at you in your pants. I'm looking at you <laughs> uh, fancy nails. You know, I'm really, really with the times. So, you know, I, I, I sat down, and I thought, okay, I'm going to be speaking to reverends, and I, I have to go to the, to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought to myself, you know, as reverends who speak, you know, you have your own congregations that you, you speak to. How do you navigate um, around, you know, parts of the Bible, and, and, I, and I'm going to quote uh, two of them here, um, that are detached from your own uh, realities. But the fact is, you have to quote these Bibles when, mm. when, when you speak uh, to your congregation. Uh, Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. You don't strike me as, as, as women who would be verifying uh, this. How do you navigate? And is there uh, a sort of contradiction, I suppose, in your word as you speak when you look at you know, these kinds of uh, uh, um, okay. verses, if I can put it that way? Yeah. I'll, I'll, Jenny will comment about the wives yeah. because um, you know, um, I'm a single woman yeah. um, as to 
her own understanding of that. Yeah. But in terms of women, you know, being expected to keep quiet, be silent, for me it has to do with how do we read the Bible. If I'm looking at the Bible, right, like reading the text as it is written, you know, in front of me, mm -hmm. I need to understand the behind the story of the text that I'm reading. Because if I'm reading that text and apply it as it is, literally as it is, uncooked as it is, then there's a problem. So I think for me as a theologian, it is important that we don't just read the text like apply it as it is. We need to understand the historical background of the text. Mm -hmm. As why the author wrote that particular text, what was the context of the time mm -hmm. and what is my context and the context of those that I'm reading the Bible to. No, you're correct. I used to tear the pages of the Bible because I used to, I used to tear those pages that actually are oppressive to women till I understood that actually I don't have to. I need to understand the context first, understand what I am reading, and therefore be able to interpret the text mm -hmm. to the hearers. All right. So Jay can talk about the wives and their position. No, I, I, yeah. I agree with you. Growing up, one never, I never heard of any stories of women except the text that you've quoted. Mm -hmm. So I was told that women must be silent in church submissive. and must be submissive. Um, and yet when I read the Bible in its totality, um, I find a God who calls women, who calls men, uh, who, who calls anybody to to do the work of God. Mm. Um, and I think, as Dixie said, when we look behind the text, um, and if we were to go to a, a church today, maybe, maybe, maybe the women are, are talkative and they're sitting over there, and so Paul is saying, well, you know, come on, woman, keep quiet. Can't you see us men are busy? Mm -hmm. uh, especially in the synagogue. I mean, if you go to a synagogue today, it would uh, generally an orthodox one yeah. you would have the woman upstairs the men downstairs they couldn't start until they have so many men then the men start uh, the women are uninvolved they're talking about other things yeah. um, so one has to understand what what is as Dick said what is the author trying to say and we that that particular um, writing in Corinthians was during a very patriarchal yeah. time you know, men were in charge, men made the decisions. And it's interesting because the one that you quoted says, wives submit to your husbands. Now, what Ephesians says is we must submit to one another as to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so I should be able to say to my husband, I'm happy to submit to you if I submit to you as I submit to Christ because I know Christ won't do me any harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can submit to my husband. Um, and he can submit yeah. to me because I, do, I will try my best not to do any harm to him. What about my friend who's single? She doesn't have a husband. So who does she submit to? <laughs> um, uh, which is nice. <laughs> so, so just in, in closing then, I mean, it seems that you, you're, you're sort of laying the, the, the foundation uh, for a, a shift or rather, you know, an end to, to what's been this patriarchy that we've seen in churches. I mean, I was spent most of my schooling life in an all-girls uh, Catholic school, mm -hmm. Assumption Convent. This is, you mm -hmm. know, this is what I knew. These are the Bible verses that were read to us. But yeah. also, you know, what would have put me off from religion, and maybe that's why the young ones now are sort of turning away, is that the, the reality of now is not really con contextualized in, yes. in, in, in churches. Yes. Is there a move and perhaps conversations, and I mean having uh, Bishop Purity at the helm now, to, to kind of talk at the level um, that we are as a reality in society right now? I think so, and I think, I think we would see that as our task as women in ministry, mm. is to empower younger women. Um, that for me, my, I, I'm, I'm passionate about helping other women to know that they can be free. Um, that we don't have to be bound. Uh, I might have all the gifts, but because I'm a woman, I will never be chosen for anything. Mm -hmm. I want our younger uh, women clergy to know that they stand a chance of being a superintendent, of being a bishop, because they've got the gifts and they've got the skills. Um, and, and for me, that's what I'm committed to. 
And that's what I believe Reverend Purity is committed to, empowering our women. Yeah, and, and, um, and what's, the, what's the message you're giving your, your, your congregation? I mean, uh, you've, you've told me how happy you are about uh, this, this appointment, but I can imagine there are some men in the church who are going, ah, but a woman. You know, what message yeah. are, you, are you giving as, yeah. as you're on the, at that pulpit? Yeah, I think Jenny can talk about her context. Yeah. We are in the same school, but I'm in the boys' school, yeah. um, uh, boys' prep. And my message is, 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 make, is to make sure that those boys are not patriarchal, are not chauvinist, yeah. and they treat women equally as, you know, according to being created in God's image. You see one another, we see God, we see Christ in you. I see the girl, I see Christ in her. So for me, it's the message of justice and the message of making sure that I'm not only saying, you know, as the boys, continue being powerful and be good and dominate but it's about you are boys you are gentlemen you are amazing mm -hmm. you are equal you know you can actually conquer the world and make it different by making sure that you and the girl of the same grade as you you talk the same language mm -hmm. this right. is something that uh, uh, presiding bishop said today about uh, this amazing god you know, who is, who is above the world, who is above the Bible, who, who just confuses, you know, everyone when this God, you know, pre, you know reveal God's self. Yeah. So this God is not, it's not a patriarchal God. All right, and Reverend Jen, I mean, when you speak uh, to, to your congregants or yeah. the people that you are around you, the men rather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to say, every congregation that I've been to, there's been um, resistance. Yeah. And yeah. after I've been there for six months, they say, well, I hope you're going to be staying for 10 years. Oh. Um, <laughs> and it's a matter of helping people to see that women can be ministers. I can marry, I can marry, I can sit with you and cry, I can sit with you and laugh. I can make decisions. Mm -hmm. I can allow you to make decisions. Yeah. I can work with, with people. And I think that's what it's all about. Uh, there w I, there's going to be resistance. Um, then no doubt about it, as Dick says, patriarchy is deep. But I think the message is, come let us do this together. Yeah. Um, because if we're going to be fighting with each other, uh, um, I mean, we see where our country, where the other countries yeah. in Africa are really struggling, and we don't have to. All right. We've got a great God. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you, and uh, thank you very much for being really the voice of, of women uh, within the church, uh, you know, an institution that has been uh, historically patriarchal, and it's great to see that there are uh, women like you within uh, the church um, and in the positions that uh, you are in. So, uh, Reverend Dick Sibeko, Reverend uh, Jenny Asandran, thank you so very much uh, for representing the Methodist Church of uh, Southern Africa today. Of course, uh, that's in relation to uh, the first female uh, presiding uh, bishop being appointed, inducted, Reverend uh, Purity Namtandazo uh, Malinga.